Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm your friendly neighborhood evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 17th and the 24th of February 2018. So let's just begin with a general picture of the sky, won't we? Sorry plant, keep on hitting this plant, it's a bitter plant, batter plant. I'm sorry for, for that violence, un unneeded violence towards plants, anyway. Back to business. So, we have a lot of Aquarian energy in the sky. It's a time for change and it's a time for decisions. It's a time to walk forward. And why is it so important? Because planets are moving in this week into Pisces. They're going to be keeping to move into Pisces. And the Piscean energy is much more spiritual and artistic in nature, but it's also much more passive in nature. So if there's things you need to be aware of, uh, or sorry, things that you are aware that need changing, this is the time to change them. Furthermore, <clears throat> Mars is going to be conjunct Vista until about March 10th from this week on. Now, as you know, Vista is the goddess of Vestal virgins, you know, who were so dedicated to the goddess that they were virgin. They were the original nuns. So this is something we are actually, this is about um, kindling the sacred flame in our life. Whatever we feel is sacred, being loyal to that, being devoted to that. And when it's conjunct Mars, this is a time that we cannot flutter. This is a time that dedication to our morals, to our ethics, and to the things we hold sacred will prove beneficial would take us forward and that's something that we need to or or i suggest that we do until the 10th really keep yourself focused and on track with the things that are really the most important for you in your life whether they they are of a personal nature or of a business nature whatever it is be true to that cause in your life um so So, um, this Saturday, the 17th, we have Mercury in Kazemi in a superior conjunction with the Sun. From all the Kazemis, I think this is one of the most important ones. Kazemi is a state in which a planet is in the heart of the Sun. It is no longer considered combust or, um, or burnt by the Sun. It is actually getting all that solar energy from the Sun and being, uh, let's say, plugged into the charger or plugged in into the AC current and, 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 and very, much, uh, very much charged. So when Mercury is in Kazemi in a superior conjunction, it is a sacred time. It's an important time. It's a time that we can visualize either in a ceremony or just writing it down or even while we are in the public transportation riding, just thinking about how we want our life to be in the next couple of months. And this has a lot to do with our words and with our actions, with the things that we know we need to correct or change. Here, Georgia agrees with me. Things that we know that we can do differently, mistakes we have done that we need to correct, this is a time that we can recalibrate, at least on our part, and, and, and so aid us reaching those goals within the next few months. So take your time and give yourself a few minutes to visualize your life forward. Um, the moon is also on Neptune this Saturday, so it's a great day to go out to nature, it's a great day for any spiritual or artistic endeavor, 
not so good for your left brain activities no computing today and no analyzing today it's also squaring mars and that square between neptune and mars which we talked about in the previous video is a square that makes us all much more sensitive and our tolerance is decreased everything we ingest is we're we're more affected by so things we eat things we drink drugs alcohol there's a greater need to escape reality sometimes a feeling of a power loss or a power failure a person a personal feeling of impotence that can make make us want to uh, jump into that imaginary bubble or run away from it, whatever it is that stresses us out but it's not all negative it's also about forgiveness both to ourselves and to other people in our lives it's about sacrifice for the greater good it's about taking our actions and actually make them more spiritually inclined and more in tune with the greater forces of this universe. And we're going to be feeling this square all through the week. Um, Sunday, the 18th, the sun enters Pisces as well. Depends where you are on the globe. It could be either on the 17th or the 18th. And happy birthday, all you Pisceans. And when the sun is in Pisces, we all become more artistic and 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 simpler in a way and more spiritual and more passive and more sensitive and a little lost we can become a little lost and be taken by the current that's why i say try to do the changes now before it's deep into pisces on the 19th the moon is going to square saturn and trine mars the trying to Mars make it, makes it a very energetic day, a day that we could take things forward, a day that we could complete things. It's a good day for physical activity or anything that we've been postponing and want to take through. But the moon square Saturn brings um, um, more criticism and more judgment. So we could be less sure of ourselves, not so confident or more judgmental towards ourselves or others. So just watch that. Tuesday, the 20th, we have the moon squaring Pluto and conjunct Uranus. It's a day that we have a short fuse, we could lash out, and we need to be careful not to be too obsessive about our actions and ideas, and really cut corners and float uh, along with things. Don't be a demagogue and don't be a tyrant. Uh, Wednesday, the 21st. The moon is going to trine Saturn. It's a great day for anything connected with your career and work. Of course, given that this is a time that this, this aspect sits well with your natal chart. But generally speaking, this is a time that in the work environment or any strategic environment we have in our life, we can sow the seeds that would be beneficial in the long run. We could make contacts with people or we can establish establish ideas on the grounds that are not yet fruitful but will be in the long run we can work strategically on this day and through these days as well because the trine is exact on wednesday but day before and a day after even a couple of days before and a couple of days after it's a good thing venus is going to conjunct neptune and as i said it's also a few days before and a few days back but this is the exact day it's going to conjunct neptune and when venus conjuncts neptune we all become much more naive and unrealistic about our relationships and the way we satisfy ourselves and the way we bring in money. So on the one hand, we can feel this connectedness. We can feel at one moment. We can feel much more uh, romantic about our relationships or about how we draw in funds or our satisfaction. Or we could feel, if we become too unrealistic, if we become too naive, we could wake up with a big uh, 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 slap to our face from the real, you know? So enjoy it on the one hand, but keep it real. When Venus is in Neptune, we can connect. When Venus is conjunct Neptune, we can, I mean, it is in Pisces and conjunct Neptune. We can connect to people too easily, you know? It's like, let's say that we are a castle and that castle is guarded by several walls, okay? so. 
Let's say that outside our walls is the general public, people we don't know. Once they become our work acquaintances, we put them in the first wall. If they become our friends, we put them in the second, the second wall. But if they become our really close friends, that's the third wall in already. And if they become a family member or a lover, that's really inside our castle. When Venus is so open and willing to connect, we could bring in to our gates people who are not deserving to get in. We could bring in people that are of dependency issues or emotional issues. We should put some guards on the gates and keep it real and keep the scum out. Anyway, don't be too altruistic too. Um, and I don't mean be, be egotistic, but the, the, I think the, one of the important lessons that altruistic people, that people who volunteer need to learn is when to put a boundary and know how to take care of oneself. Um, on the Thursday, the 22nd, you have the moon trining Pluto and opposing Jupiter. It's a great day for rekindling the fire within and finding your own inner strength and power again. We just have to be careful not to jump too high, too far, too soon to ask for too much uh, or to be too emotional, to be too melodramatic with that moon opposing Jupiter. On Friday the 23rd, the moon is going to conjunct one of the four royal stars of the past, the guardian of the east, the watcher of the east, Aldebaran, signified in the past the vernal equinox. And every royal star has this essence about it, that it can bring great honor and success on the one hand. But if we're not honest enough, if we're not sincere enough, if we don't keep our ethics and our morals, then uh, there's a downfall. And when the moon is conjunct Aldebaran, new things can sprint, uh, spring up in our lives. New endeavors can, uh, can spring up in our lives. We are talking about spring, right? So new things can sprout. But we just have to watch our honesty, our humility, uh, our sincerity, and then we're promised honors and strength. Saturday, the 24th, the moon is going to square Neptune, oppose Mars, and square Venus. So it's a sensitive day regarding relationships. We can feel a little unsatisfied. Opposing Mars, we have to watch our own aggressions and anger. And of course, know that we can receive some aggression and anger from the outside world as well. So just be more pacified and more uh, feminine on that day. And don't fight fire with fire. And the moon squaring Neptune is a bit about forgetfulness, uh, discombobulation. And I love this word, this word, discombobulated. It's a, such a nice word. Um, it almost sounds like a, like a, a dish or, 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 or a cooking method. So I put the roast in and then I discombobulated it. And uh, the rest is history. I'm vegan, by the way. <laughs> Most of the time. Anyway. Um, so the moon square Neptune can make us also not as sure of ourselves and not as secure as we would like to feel. And I want to end this by saying something about that day and about this time in general that's been told to me from my martial arts teacher, Yossi Sharif. And he told me once, he told me, Boaz, you know what the difference is between the good guys and the bad guys? So I asked him what? He said, the good guys know that they're strong enough to afford to be softer and kinder and more open because they know that even if they do get hit by a bad guy, They'll survive, they'll make it through, they're strong enough. And that what makes them put the moral and ethical boundaries on their actions. They don't use all their strength, they don't use all their weapons. They decide to be weaker, more feminine, more open, softer. Not because they're weak, but because they know strong enough to be that way one more thing I wanted to tell you is that if you 
asked me about my video, or just said something nice, and I did not reply. I just put a heart or a like on your comment. That's because you know that I'm suffering from uh, the Zuckerberg Facebook uh, totalitarianism and 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 uh, and uh, horrible horrible. Uh, Horrible, um, they've, they've been blocking me for the past four months. So my recent block is that Facebook has been telling me that I answer too many people in the comments and that I need to slow down and not answer so many people or stop altogether. So if you didn't get an answer, that's why you didn't get an answer. I was blocked, I'm still blocked. And that's why I really appreciate when you comment and like and especially share these videos because I can't. Let's just all move to another platform already and leave Zuckerberg to his thoughts. Anyway, I want to thank you for listening and I hope you're going to have a beautiful week ahead. I'm Boaz Feiler, your evolutionary astrologer. You're always welcome to contact me for anything from a private lesson, a course, or a question about astrology and of course a private consultation. Take care and goodbye.